Where are you from? Uh, I'm originally I'm from St. Louis. Lived in Arkansas for a long time, and then just this week I moved here. Oh, really? I just wow. moved here. Yeah. This week? Like four days ago. And you just so happen to end up on the November Patreon to sort of like welcome you to town. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice uh, it's a nice welcome. Wow, that's amazing. Now they're gonna that. try to meet up with her. We're gonna make sure she has a big month on OnlyFans exactly, so she yeah. can oh, afford the so fucking much. movers and stuff, yeah. right? <laughs> I would love that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you spent that beginning part of your life just bouncing around while your parents were moving you around left um, and right? Um no, so so my parents lived in St. Louis the whole time I was growing up. They still live there. Um and then I went to college, moved to Arkansas, and then it felt like, you know, things were happening in my life. I wanted to stay there. Okay. And so I lived in Arkansas for a while. Um I became a stripper while I was there. Ooh. And then pandemic hit, I started doing OnlyFans. And then that kind of has taken me here. So stripping, how long you strip for? Like two years before the pandemic. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you say before you got into that, were you sexually adventurous? Yeah. How? Yeah. How uh, adventurous <laughs> are we talking? Were you fucking the professors in college? Uh, I wasn't fucking my professors in college, but I was having a lot of sex. When I was in high school, I feel like I was like the school slut. Really? Yeah. Wow. I went, yeah. When I went, did that start to kick in? I went to Catholic school, oh, so typical. it was like extra. It was it was extra fun for me because it was a Catholic school, and right. I, I, all of our teachers like also were invested in us not being sluts for some reason. Right. So it felt extra spicy. Were you um? Fuck, was it a coed um Catholic school? Was it a what? A coed co Catholic school. Boys and girls. Co oh yeah, it was coed. It was oh, really, so it was co It okay. was a really weird school though. It was a super small school, and they segregated our classes by gender. Mm. Very odd. Keep you away from each other? Yeah, I guess so. They they had like this weird like philosophy on like you guys are gonna distract each other. We yeah, want you to do better some in truth class. To that, right? I, I guess so. But they're also you know it prepares you for the real world. It's like there's girls out in the real world. Yeah. You're gonna have to learn We're how everywhere. to deal with them. We're everywhere. Yeah. Um, so but, okay, wait. I want to ask about the stripping shit. Like, yes. Or, or actually, no, no, no. Let's go back to being a hoe. So were you not? <laughs> were you not concerned about the the you know the stigma associated with that, or or were you like okay with other girls like talking shit about you and whatnot? I mean, I didn't want them to talk shit on me. Right. But I was kind of just I was gonna do it anyway. Right. Because I like. Uh, Dick. I like having sex and, and being weird and stuff like that. And I kind of just was like, well, this is, you know, kind of just who I am. Right. So I was like, so you know, was, take, me, take it or leave it. Did you lose your virginity in high school? Yes. I did lose my virginity in high school. To who? What was his name? Uh, his name was Jake. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jake. <laughs> Jake. Was Jake. It ain't Drake. It's I Jake. Lost, Jake from State Farm. I lost my virginity in the a, a bathroom at another girl's party in high school. Oh, and then, wow. and then that girl got really mad at me later on for that. How this did she is find so out? euphoria. How did she find out? I don't even... I think I told somebody that I like fucked him in the bathroom at her party, and then like she found out through the grapevine, uh, and see she that? was she was like, "What the fuck?" So you burned yourself out. <laughs> That's the worst though. In, in, in high school, you you will always do some fire shit, yes. and then you will always tell someone, and nobody can keep a secret in high school, yes. and everyone will know by the end of the day. I had a lot of sex in the bathroom at parties in high school because I had strict parents. Really? Parties that my parents didn't even know that I was at, but <laughs> wow. Yeah. So did you think you were like at sleepovers and shit like that? Sometimes I would just sneak out. Sometimes there would be parties that we, they'd be like, oh, she's going to her friend's like Sweet 16. That's got to be. That's the best sex. Yes. The bathroom. bathroom sex. A little sex. drunk at the party. You're holding her up like this. You're just bending her over. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the best. And if you take longer than a minute or two, it's almost like they, awkward. Like and you they gotta, start knocking. You got to get it over with like hella quick because somebody's going to have to take a shit. <laughs> yes. You don't have to feel bad about like being a one pump chump kind of guy, which, you know. Because like, nah, nah, they were knocking. They were knocking. We got to go. Bro, if I'm turned up at the party all night, b dancing on you, booty shaking on me <laughs> and shit. Exactly. I'm hard. Like I'm fucking gonna bust. I'm gonna bust way too quick. And you're teenagers, so you're like already extra horny. Dick bulging out of the skin. <laughs> you know how that go. Um, okay. So yeah, I was a slut. I was a slut in high school, and then I was Dude. a slut in college, and then after college, I kind of started wilding out more and just having like orgies with my friends and stuff like that, oh like just God. for fun. Wow. Yeah. Wait, wait. So do you know what your number was by the end of high school and by the end of college? By the end of college. Probably not even that high. Probably like somewhere in like the fifty-ish. Okay, respect. But so yeah. what are you at now? I don't know. <laughs> probably like <laughs> somewhere close to one fifty or two hundred. Nice. Wait, were you I stripping like while you were in college? I'll admit that. You what? So was the car? Were you stripping while you were still in college? No, I didn't start stripping until um, after college. <clears throat> I did. I worked at some nonprofits for a while. 
bills were not getting paid very well. Wow. Um, so you came out of college excited to like be, make a difference in the yeah, world? Yeah, I was like, I'm about to be a, you know, a, a citizen participating in right. stuff wow. that people are supposed to do. And I did. But then I was like, okay, I also am going to strip on right. the side. Yeah. Because yeah. why not? Yeah. It was fun. I, I liked it. It was a fun job. In I Arkansas. Worked this, I worked at this insane club in Arkansas. Where, really? Yeah, it was, a, it was a club in this town called Hot Springs, which is like a horse racing town okay. in Arkansas. <laughs> of course. It's like, a, it's like a small horse racing town. They're built on tourism around like uh, like gangster history, horse racing, and crystal mining. Different kind of gangster, I assume, than where yeah, you saw like here? Yeah, like fedora, like m'lady yeah. type gangster. Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> he has no idea. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm from downtown LA. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the, the club itself was super weird um, because like you could buy like privacy with girls for like $15. 15? 15? $15? You could, no, it was $30. You could go get a lap dance in a private room. And, and, and you could even buy a shower with a girl there. A shower? A shower. But don't you have makeup on? Yeah, it was weird. It was super, I think it was also really awkward for the guys because like if a guy were to like take a shower at the strip club, like he would go down there and then he'd like come back to the strip club like soaking wet. You got to go home at that point. You're There's, not, you're not going to stay at the strip club anymore. There wasn't longer. towels at the strip club? They had towels. They but they're like your hair is wet. You know, like, I don't know. It sounds kind of weird. Yeah. You can't totally dry yourself. Did you ever shower with a guy at the strip club? Oh yeah, and, and, like every weekend people would buy. And was it awkward? Would you be me. touching on them and shit? Um, I mean, yeah, that, it, it was basically like a massage in the shower. Was what it would usually end up being. Wow. Yes. And so they wouldn't be trying to fuck you in the shower and shit. Oh, I would they be, would always be I trying would, to fuck me in yeah, the shower. Absolutely. I would try. Yeah. Yeah, I, I fooled around with some people in the shower. Really? At the strip club. Guys yeah. that you were feeling, or just because they gave you more money, or what? A little both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard. Right? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. <laughs> That's fire right there. What What do you, oh, okay, like early on though, did you start to like, r do you really enjoy sex? Because for me, I, I have a theory that the girls who like, r who have the kind of vagina that really likes to orgasm often end up going in. Oh, it's a, a vagina quality. In a very different okay. direction. I, every <laughs> vagina is different, but I've known girls throughout my life who like never orgasm. Oh. And they've had, you know, they get married after like three, four sex partners because they're not that sexually motivated. Mm. When I hear about a girl saying she fucked 200 guys, I'm kind of like, all right, she's probably like, yeah. she really likes fucking. I'm very, I'm very sexually motivated. I, I think I didn't even have an orgasm until I was like 21 or something like that. It took me a long time in my life. But then once I started coming, I was like, let's go. Really? <laughs> yeah. Legend. You were just fucking with it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Any other crazy experiences at the strip club? Oh, one time, me and my friend, I did I did a lot of, uh, okay, since basically all the lap dances were private, so mm. a lot of guys at the strip club would want, like, weird, like, domination stuff. I say weird, but it was, like, my favorite thing to do there. Really? There was this one dude who, so I grew up listening to the Grateful Dead a lot. My dad is a, a huge Grateful Dead fan, and so I had a lot of Grateful Dead knowledge stored in my mind. Okay. Um, and oh. so this customer came into the strip club. He was, like, you know, wearing, like, Dancing Bears and stuff like that. And I kind of like won him over with some like Grateful Dead knowledge that I had picked up during my childhood. And then he revealed to me that he had a huge foot fetish and was really into domination. Oh. Um, and me and my friend Sydney Summers, who's also an OnlyFans girl now, we went from strip club to OnlyFans together. Okay. Um, she and I were like very inseparable at this strip club. And so we kind of like got him to go down to the VIP with us. Um, and we watched him take the entirety of all of his money out of his wallet to do it. So we knew that he had nothing left after this. <laughs> um, and so he basically was like, if, if you guys bring me down to VIP, will you like rub your feet in my face and, and be mean to me? And we were like, yeah, totally. Right. We'll definitely do that. And so we brought him down there and we were like, be took our, to we me. were be, being mean to be him, mean to me. like pushing our feet into his face. Like this man was, had no control over the situation. Right. Um, and then he tried to take his dick out and we just started yelling at him. We were like, no, no, no. Like we were, we were getting really mean with him. And this man was like on the verge of tears, but he couldn't take his dick out and beat his meat while we were stepping on his face. What? And, and by the time that he left, he was just like totally crestfallen. Like in a bad way, but I thought this is what he, he was, wanted. He wanted to be humiliated. Yeah, I think I think that he wanted to be humiliated, but while uh, while Jerking jacking off. off. Yeah. And we were like, we were like, sir, you don't have any money left. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? But I'll we kind of it was really fun to just be extra mean to him. I'll go jerk off in the bathroom and then be like, 
appreciate you girls. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. We had a great time. Well, at the, but is it, you seem like a pretty nice person. Was it hard to like snap into that mode of like, I'm going to humiliate this guy and just really try to make him feel like shit? It's like a fun game. I did some pro dom stuff too. Right. Um, you want, do you want to hear a fun pro dom story? Yeah, but, but but is there not like a moment where as you're like mashing your feet into this guy's face where like as a human being, you just sort of start to feel like, fuck, like... I'm a piece of shit. You don't deserve this. You're, you're just a guy. No, they want it to happen. Yeah, but then he's crying. Oh, he didn't cry. <laughs> he, it didn't go that far. Okay. So as he's leaving, are you like... If a guy wanted me to make him cry, though, I would. Oof. Fuck it, do you like hug him or goodbye? Or is yeah. You, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm always... I mean, like, it, you got to sprinkle in some niceness. Right. Because you're doing it because they want to have that experience. I wouldn't I wouldn't do that for somebody if I genuinely was like, fuck you. Right. You know? That is the weird thing about it is that it's something that would never happen unless you paid a woman to do it. Yeah. For the most part. For the most part. That's why those that's why prostitution should be legal, is because those dudes are not gonna be able to find a person who's gonna be able to make them come or get off or whatever unless they pay for it. it just makes sense. It's just, a lot of them, just another yeah. service, right? Yeah. I don't know. I think stuff like that is fun. I don't know. I feel like it would be fun to be in a relationship that had like fun BDSM elements to it. That is the good part about the internet is that now yes. those people can find each other. But it's like, okay, say that was my thing. Say I wanted right. to get my dick fucking stomped on and shit. And I just start going to the club and meeting girls and bringing them home. And then as soon as I get them home, I'm like, listen, I want you to crush my testicles. Just really stomp on them. They're going to be, them. most of those girls are going to be like, no. Yeah, that's true. That's tough. I wonder if you could kill somebody if you popped their ball. You think somebody could die like that? I don't think you could die, but I think you could, you know, not be able to produce cum anymore, and it hurts just thinking about it. Ugh. I feel like I'm a little bit disillusioned from from working in like OnlyFans and porn and stuff now because, right. like, I I feel like this is not a normal experience. But I could, you know, like within five minutes, like reach out to like another person on the internet and be like, "Would you kick me in the face or something?" That's not my thing. Yeah, but you know, like in theory. I could I could find whatever I wanted very easily, somebody to piss in my mouth or whatever. It is weird too, yeah, how like, you know, you're telling me this story, but realistically, I, I remember the first girl I ever met who told me about being a dominatrix when I was like it was right right before I left New York, so it was probably two thousand nine. And she told me all about like sticking metal sticks in dudes' dick holes and Incredible. all this crazy shit. And it blew my fucking mind. I told everybody I knew. And now here we are, 13 years later, it barely even faces me because it's just I'm so used to it. <laughs> That's so cool. I feel, I feel like I always like idolized like doms who were into like sounding and stuff like that. Do you ever do that to a guy? I've never done sounding, but one time. What the fuck is sounding? Sounding is when you put a metal piece into the guy's dick hole real deep, and then you take another metal piece and you bang it into the metal piece to make it vibrate, and it vibrates. Like you know those uh, musical forks yeah. that you, yeah. you play within like middle That's school. It's like it's like that, but in your dick. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Isn't that fucked up that that's um, a thing? The triangle? <laughs> that's fucking wild, dude. Oh, man. When I, when I found out about that, oh, my mm -hmm. God. Fuck, yeah. you've never done that before? I've never. I've never. I feel like I would need some mentorship to learn how to do that properly. I mentorship? Would, I wanna, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't want to fuck some guy up doing it wrong. You know, some, but some that's stuff. why they make all the difference size sounds yeah. they make really little ones and then you gauge your dick hole out and yo i mean it hurts it's even it makes me feel like uh, pain in pain even thinking about what that would feel like one time when yeah. i was a dom i had this client who was really into like humiliation and forced feminization and stuff like that and uh, i met a, i met up with him for a, a session and you know we did like the regular stuff he would do like made him dress up in like girly clothes and stuff like that but then he had been asking me for me and my friends to all save up a jar of spit to make him drink it. Um, and so uh, we had been saving, I'd saved up this jar of spit, it was like a mason jar, like this big. You're and just I, spitting in it every day? Yeah, we were just spitting it over the course of a week. You're just this, sitting this around, is so gross. you're it's, watching The Office. Just, yeah. How much is he paying for this? Oh, it, it was like $500 an hour. It was a pretty low rate at the time, but it was a lot of money to me. Okay. Yeah. And so you come through with a jar of I spit. I come through with a huge jar of spit. You and your friends. This was just me, just but it was spit. me and my friend spit. How big was this jar? Oh my god! It was like a big mason jar. Okay. Um, and then, uh, in spur of the moment, instead of making him drink it, I waterboarded him with it. Describe waterboarding for so our I, audience. So I put a rag over his face, right? And I poured it 
over his face so no, that he that's was fucking torture. He couldn't breathe. How yeah. do you know how to do this? You used to work at Guantanamo Bay or something? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. She used I... to fucking kidnap people and fucking at the club. <laughs> you fucking sick fuck. Like, wait, like you're, you're supposed to do something kind of easy or obvious of just like making him drink it and then you're just like, no, I'm going to do real deal torture. <laughs> did you suggest... He, he loved it. Okay, okay. He so did you suggest it. it or he did? You it was did. Kind of, it was spur of the moment, but we had built enough trust that it was okay to do something like that. Right. Yeah, like, we had a lot of established, you know, consent and, he was and boundaries. It. Oh, he loved it. He loved it. And, like, uh, yeah, so basically when you waterboard someone, you, you put a rag over their face and you pour water over it, and it stimulates drowning. Right. Yeah. So he was drowning in my 3D-old spit. Did it smell bad? Yes. Was it, How <laughs> thick was the spit? That's what I'm saying. Are you guys like... I mean, or like I'm a pretty well-hydrated person. See, so that's what I was thinking. like atrocious. Because like a lot of spit is going to kind of almost look like water. But then also like pretty much every day I wake up with a nice brownish yellow loose. Yeah, because you weight. smoke hella fucking blood yeah. and shit. <laughs> oh, sick, bro. Oh, my God. That's not me. Some so. percentage of our audience is fucking so turned on right now. <laughs> and some percentage of our audience is so grossed out. Good.